What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash petty revenge. Alright, this story's called, Park Your BMW Like a Prick? Well, two can play that game. Being a BMW owner, one of the things that irk me are the others giving us a bad name. Sure, I enjoy an active driving style, but I use my blinkers and try not to park like a douche. Well, I normally try to not park like a douche. Drove down into the parking basement at work and noticed there was an available spot that most had given up on due to the parking of the BMW X3 in the next slot over. Well, should be more than enough room for a 5 Series next to it, right? I got in just fine but was too close to the concrete pillar to walk out comfortably. I'd have to squeeze past it. Saw that! Repositioned closer to the X3 and had all the space I wanted to get out. Left a nice margin to the parking line too. Sadly for the X3 driver, that didn't leave much space for him. Petty, but I enjoyed it. Alright, this story's called, Please Don't Park in My Driveway. I live next door to an apartment building, and where their parking lot ends and my driveway starts, there are concrete slabs to show where one ends and the other starts. I even have a sign at the end of the driveway saying, Private Parking, Not Apartment Parking. There is lots of room for all tenants and their visitors so they don't need to park on my property at all. I called the apartment building landlord and complained a few times because people park parking in my yard. He said he has signs all around the building where people can park, visitor parking and tenant parking, which he does. He said if they park on my property to call a tow company. I woke up one morning and go to work and couldn't get out because some jack mule had parked in my driveway. I called a towing company from a totally different city about three hours away. I couldn't wait for them because of work, but asked if they could call when they were all hooked up and I will come home to make sure it's done. I I only lived five minutes from work and my boss allowed me to go take care of this. When I got home, the car was already loaded onto a flatbed and was just pulling out when the owner of the car came running out hollering for the truck to stop. He didn't. Then the guy looked at me and was very hostile and said, This is all your fault! You will be paying to get my car back. I just laughed at him and pointed at my sign, saying no parking or vehicle will be towed at owner's expense. I had already called the police as well to see if I could legally do it, and they told me since I have had signage up for over a year that nothing can be done against me. I told the guy where he can get his car back and was pissed to say the least. I backed out and went back to work. After work, the landlord came to see me. He said the guy tried to complain to him and telling him it will either be one of us or both, but someone will be paying to get his car back. He was told the tow charge alone was $800 because of the distance, and $150 a day storage until it was picked up. I know he got his car back because I saw it parked in the visitor parking a couple of days later. It is funny how after this happened, I have not had another person park in my driveway again. I still get the stink eye every time that guy sees me. I smile and wave each time because I am an a-hole like that. Well, well, uh, <laughs> towing it three hours away was very, very overkill. However, a sign is a sign, so no one's at fault but the guy who parked. This story's called Body Shaming Bullies. Today I was at the lake jumping off the dock with family. There were two boys on their jet ski stopped around 20 yards away. One hopped off and got in the water. His body language seemed as if he was going to swim to the dock. Suddenly, he acted grossed out and said, Ew, let me back on, never mind. When the other dude asked why, he says, Because her ass. And the rest, I just turned myself out because who likes to hear that crap? I knew he was talking about me because I was the only one on the dock with my daughter, who thankfully was enjoying herself jumping into the water. After tuning myself out, I hopped into the water. Instead of letting it go like I normally do, I hold my middle finger up. At first, he thought I was waving to him, so he waved back. Then after taking a second look at me, because I held that crap up for the longest, because you, he realized I was flicking him off. Immediately afterwards, he runs off on daddy's jet ski into the bully sunset. Now here's the part I thought was petty revenge. Ever feel so stupid waving at someone you think is waving at you, but is really waving at the person behind you? Yeah, that was the stupid ass look on his face because he thought I couldn't hear that crap. 
<laughs> and that he thought I was waving at him. Screw you, bully boy. Edit. Wow, thanks for my first award, peeps. I really appreciate those who took the time to leave an uplifting comment. I didn't come on here to look for pity, but to share what I thought was petty revenge. I didn't care much about what they were saying. Still don't for those internet trolls who think it's okay to message me stupid crap, but more so on what they were doing and thought to be okay. I cannot stand a bully, and I won't tolerate that butthole behavior, especially in front of children. It isn't hard to read between the lines on what someone is saying. Sometimes body language and tone give it all away. For the jerks who can't see that, you're no different from those bullies and are part of the reason why the world is what it is today. Ah. Okay, what that kid did was definitely not okay. <laughs> But to say, uh, oh, your body language and tone is off, so you think I'm gross, that's not a healthy way to think. It's not worth paying attention to that kind of stuff, because, yeah, while you might feel clever or whatever, it's just gonna make you sad, because who needs all that negativity exposed to them all the time? You know what I'm saying? And so if you acknowledge that as negativity directed toward you, well, it's just gonna make you feel a little bad, even if you don't want to act like it does. This story's called, When Stubbornness Backfires. I work retail in a small rural town. It is the only retail business. Both of my adult children work there as well. My daughter came out as trans a few years ago. Most of the customers have been okay about it, but there have been a few that have been not so much. One in particular has been exceedingly bad about it. Styx is an entitled little butthole. He's the town golden child. The other day, he was asked to put a mask on by my daughter, because that is the county mandate, and businesses sort of need to follow mandates because of pesky little things like licenses and such. He immediately got rude, so I pulled him aside and explained that he could put it on, or he could leave. I really didn't care which option he chose. Instead of doing either, he started complaining about my daughter. He kept deliberately misgendering her and using her birth name. I could see a few of the customers customers were getting irate by his behavior because while they may not understand what being trans means exactly, they like my daughter and could see she was visibly upset. I had finally had enough and said, Steven, you need to leave. His reply was, My name is Styx, not Steven. So I told him that, since he was such a fan of birth names, I will be calling him by his birth name until the end of time. Wouldn't want to be rude and all, right? He left, and not happily. Here is the petty revenge. Even though it was inadvertent on my part and played out by other people, the other customers in the store that day are now using his given name. There are other people who who weren't there that day who are also just using his given name. He hears it when he goes to the bar. He hears it when he goes to the bank. He hears it when he goes to the cafe. I only know this because people are gleefully coming in to tell us this constantly because small rural towns are kind of weird, y'all, and things like this are a big deal. Not gonna lie, the pettiness of these people warms my heart. While the petty revenge is not going to change this guy, their hearts are in the right place and I love them for their attempt to protect my daughter. And they just look so damn proud of themselves when they come in to report the latest act. Edit. Wow, I posted this before bed last night after receiving another It Happened Again text from a petty revenger. I also happened to be on this sub when the text came in. I wasn't sure if the story actually belonged in the sub because A, I'm not the one doing the petty revenge, and B, I'm not sure if it actually qualifies as revenge, but I don't know what else to call it. I posted it on a whim. Every single time it happens, my faith in humanity gets slightly restored. I thought I'd post it to revenge remind people that there are far more good people out there than there are bad. The names have been changed in this story. As to those who want to know the name of the town to move here, just move to any small rural town. You can see behavior like this played out in every little town everywhere. It's far from an LGBTQ plus utopia. There are plenty of detractors. I just don't mention them because they no longer come in the store. And that's okay, so they're not really on my radar. The golden child is so because of who his family is. His grandpa was the mayor, his uncle was a big wig at the bank, and so was his aunt. Those of you who have never lived in Tiny Town, USA, likely won't understand it. But those who have are nodding their head right now. Like I said, small towns can be weird, y'all. Yeah, small towns are great because of that sense of community, but... <laughs> You also get a bit of a hive mind mentality because you know, there's not a lot of outside influence coming in to, you know, let people know that they're idiots. 
All right, this story's called Not Gonna Pick Up After Your Filthy Mutts or Train Them at All? Say hello to Meat Fest 2020. My next door neighbor is a Karen who recently adopted a few dogs. At first, there was no issue, but then my driveway and lawn started getting more and more dog crap. Everyone who has dogs is very good at picking up after their pets, except for Karen. She denies it's her dogs, despite security footage showing it's clearly her and her damn dogs. The dogs are not trained well, Karen doesn't use leashes because they are barbaric, and sadly there is no law where we live about dogs being on leashes. She also put them on vegan diets, which is clearly not doing well for the dogs. Karen also leaves the dogs in her backyard yard and they bark at everything. We tried calling the police, but they don't do jack. The entire neighborhood is fed up with her. One day, another neighbor is having a barbecue and the aroma wafts over to her house. Karen gets pissed and heads over to the neighbor's house and gives them a lecture about animals and other crap. At this point, we all have had enough of Karen's holier-than-thou attitude. Seven homes surrounding Karen decided to make Karen's days from this point on miserable. Since it's summer and we're all stuck at home, we all decide to start cooking outdoors. Some homes purposely get barbecue grills and smoke. I myself turned my fire pit into kitchen number two. Every day, at least one of us is cooking some glorious meat dish, and the aroma goes straight to Karen's home. I try to cook at least one thing outside, especially if it's extra aromatic. We all have plenty of wood, thanks to our neighbor who recently took down a dead tree and gave everyone wood. A lot of wood. Karen complains and complains, and even tries to call the police, but obviously, we're doing nothing wrong. I just got some bricks it to smoke for 16 hours. My other neighbor plans to roast an entire pig. Oh my god, I want to live in a neighborhood like that. I want those uh, super friendly, over-enthusiastic neighbors that's always like, hey, a neighbor, I've got a hot dog grilling for you if you want it. <laughs> and, uh, and a couple of beers. I don't even like beer. I don't want to drink beer. But <laughs> if I'm offered some like that, I, I can't say no. It's an experience. And Karen, come on, don't, don't mistreat your dogs like that. They need some meat. Ah, I'm gonna eat some lasagna now, I'm hungry. This story's called, Got the Apartment Manager Back When We Left. My wife, then girlfriend, and I used to live in an apartment complex that was pretty middle of the road. It was sort of outdated, but not falling apart, just a regular apartment. It was 20 years old at the time, so it needed a lot of routine maintenance. Toilets, garbage disposal, etc., but nothing crazy. Apartment staff and management was nice. My mom started working there as a short-term thing while she was getting back into the medical billing field. It was all well and good until we got a new apartment manager. This manager did not like my mom. Everybody loves my mom. She's super kind and just like a Disney mom, pretty much. We can call the new manager Janet. Janet was positive that my mom was trying to steal her job. No matter how many times she explained, this wasn't even a permanent job for her. So Janet made her life miserable at work until she fired her. She also decided that no one would come out to fix anything broken at our apartment anymore. We had a first story apartment and a window that didn't latch and a toilet that didn't flush, but we were moving out soon, so we thought, no big deal. A few weeks before we moved out, I noticed the carpeted cat tree by our large window was... Uh, moldy? It was super soggy. When we picked the tree up and looked at the carpet, that was mildewy and gross too. Not wanting to be blamed for the damage, I investigated and found a sprinkler on the little landscape patch under our window was busted and spraying on our wall. Window wasn't sealed properly, so it was just soaking our carpet and basically of the cat tree. I let management know several times. Oh yeah, we'll come fix it. Yep, sorry, we did it tomorrow. Tomorrow for sure. Eventually, I just said screw it and left it. Except when we moved out, I went outside, turned the sprinkler towards the window as much as it would go, and cracked the window. Came back a few days later to pick up a lamp we forgot about, and the carpet was soaked everywhere. It was July, so it stank to high heaven. Flies were everywhere. The wall was water damaged. It was so gross. I didn't say anything. After all, they knew about it. I called several times. 
I'm hoping it put them out a grand or so for the repairs. As a side note, it took months to hear back from them. Four months later, we received a check in the mail for about $400 with a little note from Janet that she was returning our deposit. Good, mean woman. Uh, well, that... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was illegal behavior from Janet because, uh, well, like, come on, man. This is someone's living situation, but I'm glad they got him back. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.